How's it hanging my garage gym geeks, Peloton peeps, and all the rest of you fitness freaks? I am excited to be bringing back weekly updates in fitness through this new series, This Week in Fitness, where I'll be covering all the latest updates and news you want to know about, from recently released home gym equipment to the newest updates with Peloton and other connected fitness services, as well as news regarding the latest fitness tech and sports watches, recovery devices, and everything else in the ever-growing home fitness space. And Jesus Christ, we have a lot to cover this week. Hydro's announcement of its new ultra premium, ultra expensive Vista rower, Polar releasing the Polar Grit X2 Pro, its supposedly most advanced sports watch ever. Then we have Rogue announcing some brand new, pretty unique functional trainers, as well as a ton of new updates for Peloton, including a few things we found data mined like new game modes and new team building mechanics, and so much more. So sit back, relax, smack that like button, and let's get the show started. So Hydro has announced a brand new luxury model of its rower, called the Hydro Vista, which comes in all black, includes a 27 inch QHD 4K touchscreen display that can rotate 180 degrees in either direction, a vastly improved speaker system, and most intriguing of all, what they say is a new dynamic spring tensioner that can continuously adjust and allow the rower to be whisper quiet. Now, you may or may not remember this, but Peloton, who released their premium rower over a year ago, also initially advertised it as being whisper quiet, only to remove that messaging a few months after release, because evidently the Peloton row was only whisper quiet when you first got it, but became noisier over time the more that you used it. And so members thought their rower was broken and Peloton was like, nope, it just should sound like that. And all the messaging of whisper quiet disappeared very quickly. But the design of the Peloton row and the Hydro Vista is very different. So here's to hoping that Hydro actually delivers on the Vista being truly whisper quiet. But of course, we're gonna have to wait and see as the Hydro Vista isn't expected to ship until late 2024 or early 2025. You can pre-order it now, but just a little warning, it cost a face melting $4,000. Holy shit, Hydro, I thought we were trending towards more affordable fitness equipment nowadays, but I guess not. And so for what is essentially the cost of four Concept2 rowers, it better damn well be whisper quiet. Now, to be fair, Hydro has been lowering the cost of its other rowers, so it's not like the Vista is your only choice. And there is one good news from this announcement that I think all Hydro members should be happy about. And that is that there is no way in hell that Hydro releases this 27 inch QHD 4K curved touchscreen without also allowing you access to streaming content that can actually utilize the quality of it, like Netflix or Max or whatever. So hopefully this means that Hydro will be allowing access to streaming services on all of its devices in the near future. Speaking of expensive fitness tech, Polar has released what is supposedly their most advanced sports watch ever, the Polar Grit X2 Pro, with an additional model encased in titanium called the Polar Grit X2 Pro Titan. These ultra rugged military grade outdoor sports watches include dual frequency GPS, offline map and navigation support, a high resolution 1.3 inch AM OLED touchscreen display protected by scratch resistant sapphire crystal glass and a 10 day battery life. So really it's essentially the same watch as their previously released Polar Vantage V3, but with a more rugged and protected exterior and a much higher price, starting at $749 for the base model and $869 for the Titan model. Despite the price, it does look pretty damn good, and so I'll definitely be putting together a review for it here at Connect the Watts in the near future. Moving on to Rogue Fitness, the giant in the garage gym space, well, they have just announced their long and eagerly awaited functional trainers, the Rogue FM6 and the Rogue FMHR. Between these two and their various options, you'll soon be able to order a functional trainer with a half or full power rack, and what's pretty compelling about these is the unique patent pending pulley configuration that they've designed here which achieves a standard two to one ratio for the functional trainer, but also a one to one ratio for the lat pull down and low rows, all using a single weight source of up to 300 pounds available as either a weight stack or plate loaded trolley. And if what I just mumbled out doesn't make any sense to you, I'll give you the cliff notes because it basically allows these functional trainers to be made more cheaply since they don't need to have as much weight plates in order to offer the same loading as others. The only real problem, of course, is that even though it can be made cheaper, 
since Rogue is usually much higher priced than any other company, it essentially means you can get one of these at around the same cost that you can get other popular functional trainers from Rep or Force USA, including the G15 I reviewed earlier this year. But I am happy to see Rogue finally come out with their own functional trainer and jump into the space with a competitive product because as they say, competition leads to better prices and so on for consumers. So hopefully that'll be the case over time here. Now let's talk Peloton for a moment because this company has really been stepping up to the plate lately. One of its most important updates being that Peloton can now connect with third party rowers like Concept2. And this is a pretty fucking big deal, both for Concept2 owners who are looking for something to jazz up their own cardio sessions, but also for Peloton members who may already have a bike or a treadmill, but don't want to fork up the 3000 bones for the Peloton row. Because now you can buy a Concept2 rower for under $1,000 and still be able to row along to the classes and track your metrics and everything else. So really a big win for Peloton members and it's part of a trend we are seeing from Peloton over the past year, where they've sort of been transitioning from being one of the most anti-consumer companies ever to being extremely consumer friendly with the changes that they've been making. And that includes another update this week where you can now record workouts on the Peloton app without an internet connection. The Peloton Just Workout feature can now operate completely offline, allowing you to record your workout on your phone even without access to Wi-Fi or cellular. There are also some additional updates coming to Peloton that I think seem pretty nice, one of which is that it has been confirmed that Peloton is currently testing power zone training for the tread. And if you've watched any video I've ever made about the Peloton tread, you've probably heard me complain endlessly about how power zone not being available there is both terrible and dumb and that it needs to be added to make the tread comparable in value to the bike. So I'm excited that Power Zone is finally indeed coming to the tread, hopefully sooner than later. And for those of you who don't know, here at Connect the Watts, we are more than just a YouTube channel, but also a website, a website where we post the latest news about Peloton and other connected fitness tech. And you can check out the link in the description below. But one of our writers, Kyle Bradshaw, along with our sister site, 9to5Google, has really been digging into some of the new code and internal files added to Peloton recently and have found some fascinating stuff. First off, there are signs of two new games in development as part of a quote, games prototype experience. The game furthest along in production is titled Grow, a game in which your exercise efforts are used to quote, transform a barren land into a lush garden. It's hard to get a sense of how Grow is played without trying it ourselves, but the gist seems to be running or biking through pathways with a watering can and the goal to bring new life to the land around you. Along the way, it seems you will have to avoid demonic looking rabbits that block your path. In its current form, there are plans for three difficulties depending on how intense of a workout you're seeking. I mean, it looks kind of dumb, but I would certainly be willing to give it a try. And then there's a bit less information available for the second game, which doesn't seem to have a name yet, though it does seem to be a far more ambitious project. Quote, discover mysterious artifacts while transversing an open world is how the game is described in the files. The only other clue we have is from a bit of promotional artwork, which somewhat evokes the art styles of popular indie adventure games like Journey. And so far as we can tell, both of Peloton's upcoming games are intended to be available across the Peloton Bike, Bike Plus, Tread, and Tread Plus models, leaving the row distinctly excluded. It also seems that Peloton may be planning to do some public alpha testing on one or both games, possibly with a small test audience audience judging from the in-app text and a grow related survey that we also were able to uncover. That said, it's also possible that none of these games will ever see the light of day. Peloton is surely doing internal testing to see which, if any, of these games is engaging enough to see a wider release. Our team was also able to dig into the latest update in the Peloton app and found preparations to allow members to form teams with friends and family members. Peloton app version 3.20 introduces a handful of new in-app text describing how to create a team with other Peloton members. And from the clues available, it seems you'll be able to form teams that can be filled with as many as 2,000 Peloton members. Then once you've joined a team, you'll be able to work together to reach collective fitness goals. Again, there's a chance that Peloton may choose not to launch teams at all, but I think it's pretty likely we'll see it added sometime this year. Now, speaking of leaks, images of the upcoming budget-priced VR device, the MetaQuest 3 Lite, have served surfaced and been spreading online, including the possibility of a different name being used altogether, the new name being the MetaQuest 3S. The leak shows a headset design that looks thicker than the MetaQuest 3, which makes sense as Meta is likely using older, thicker lenses from the Quest 2 to help lower its cost. A concern some are having is that it seems that the two RGB cameras and depth projector of the Quest 3 have all but disappeared, making the device far more similar to the Quest 2 than a lower cost version of the Quest 3, at least in terms of its ability to have color pass through and integrate mixed reality. 
These, however, are still unconfirmed leaks though, so it is still up for speculation. But given the frequency of leaks coming through now, we're probably pretty close to a release announcement and will likely get the full scoop from Meta themselves. Getting back to connected fitness, iFit, the company behind Nordic Track, is starting to finally wake up out of their hibernation. The company has been pretty quiet these past few years with very few updates as they've been steering through huge company shakeups and changes forced by the post-pandemic landscape. They've recently added some new AI coaching ability to their devices, but evidently there's a lot more to come that iFit keeps teasing. And this week they announced changes to their memberships, which they say will quote, more accurately mirror your fitness journey with iFit. One of the new memberships called the Train Membership will be for access to iFit workouts on the app. And while the price has not been announced, it seems likely that it'll be a cheaper option, similar to how Peloton charges less for their digital membership. And then the regular iFit membership designed for those with an iFit enabled device, like a bike or treadmill, that membership is now gonna be called the Pro Membership. iFit is still being a bit cryptic about all these changes, but they say more details are coming soon. They also don't mention the iFit individual plan, which has always been sort of a secret hidden option, but it seems that two may be staying as iFit says not to worry for current members, as iFit says current members will not have any changes to services or fees associated with their membership. Though if changes are being made for new members, that is the big question. Now, while iFit did get some of those recent AI updates, they aren't the only ones to be pushing deeper into the AI craze, with Fitbit seemingly jumping in and preparing to add AI capability to its own smartwatches. This week, Google announced that it is developing a personal health large language model based on Gemini to analyze Fitbit data to provide more customized wellness advice and recommendations. Google isn't sharing any details of when the AI model will be added to its Fitbit or Pixel smartwatches, but it's definitely something we could see happen this year as the devices get ready for a refresh come the fall. Which honestly, Fitbit has been pretty much a shit show ever since Google bought them, as the devices now seem to have less functionality than they did prior, and I'm not sure adding AI will do much to help with that, but something is always better than nothing, so we'll have to wait and see for ourselves. And if AI updates in your bike or smartwatch aren't futuristic enough for you, you may want to check out the latest video featuring Jake Gyllenhaal's training preparation for his upcoming role in the remake of Roadhouse. In the video, a lot of Gyllenhaal's training seems to focus on the use of Proteus Motion, a very high-tech resistance machine which can deliver resistance in every direction, or what they call 3D resistance. So basically, instead of a device like Tonal or Vitruvian, which can create resistance in one direction, Proteus Motion can evidently create resistance in any direction while you move. So really interesting tech, though I'm not sure how much it costs, it probably ain't cheap though, but it's something I'll definitely be keeping my eye on. And really quickly, let's talk about some of the biggest and best deals of the week. Now, first off, the plunge is having the biggest sale I've ever seen for its XL cold plunges at $1,500 off the regular price. The regular plunge is also on sale, so if you've been looking for a premium cold tub to add to your morning routine, now may be the time to take the plunge, both figuratively and literally. The Speedians Gym Monster is also having a pretty good sale right now with 15% off, and if you use the code CALLIN, you'll get an additional $120 off beyond that. Finally, Amazon is also having a huge spring sale right now. For example, the Garmin 4Runner 255 is $100 off, and the Peloton Bike is almost $400 off. And you can check out even more of the best discounts I've been able to find in the video description below. And that's a wrap, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed this week's recap for what's new in fitness. As always, I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you next week.